Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires now, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends and family, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As he called and ordained minister of the Church of Jesus Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. As we now enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his sufferings, death, burial, and the resurrection, let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today is Palm Sunday, and our reading comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 26, and we'll read verses 14, and we'll continue with the 27th chapter from verse 1 to 66. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, what will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make the preparation for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is near. I'll keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who had dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. 
While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciple, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, you will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? which say it must happen this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest.
arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last two came forward and said, This fellow say, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, have you no answer? What is that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered. He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again he denied it with an wolf. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him astray, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourselves. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price, and they give them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? 
Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they made against you? But he gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his worn clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we'll believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lima sabachthani, 
that is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sore wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were open and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that impostor said while he was still alive, after three days, I'll rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I am so glad that we have this long reading of the Passion of Jesus Christ. Not often that we read the entire story like we just did today. And I believe and I trust that you have not started your clock yet. So now we start the sermon, so my 15 minutes starts from here. Amen? The time has come for the Jews to celebrate the Passover. This is an observance of what is recorded in Exodus chapter 12 when they left the land of Egypt. This one, Passover, is different from any regular Passover. This is the change of the word Passover to Easter. This is the change of the bread that they share on the meal to become the communion or the Eucharist that we celebrate. Jesus Christ changed the history of this world upside down. Palm Sunday is the celebration of Jesus going to Jerusalem, surrounded by the crowds, people shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna waiting for the salvation brought by the son, the descendant of David. For 700 years and more, they were waiting for the coming of the Messiah. But this is a little strange. The Messiah was not riding on a white medallion. He was riding on a donkey. The Messiah didn't come with a full troops. He came with a bunch of fishermen, tax collectors, some builders, some regular people. But nevertheless, the crowds were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. 
Hosanna is not actually a cry of praise. Hosanna is a plea for help. It is a cry of desperation. Literally, in Hebrew, it means, come, save us. They expected Jesus to bring something spectacular to their society. They were under the power of the Romans. But here, Jesus, with his humility, going to Jerusalem to die. His disciples told him not to go there, but Jesus has to fulfill what the will of his Father is. I would like to draw our attention today to the fact that Jesus now is his disciple. He's been with his disciples for around three years. And believe it or not, Judas was the treasurer. Jesus trusted Judas. The eleven trust Judas to keep their money. But this thirst of money was increasing in the heart of Judas. He always finds some way to take the money and put it in his own pocket. Remember the story of Jesus being anointed by the oil and Judas said, we could have sold this oil and give the money to the poor. But in fact, he wanted to keep the money for himself. The chief of priests did not invite Judas to come. Judas himself volunteered and went to them and how much would you pay me? I will deliver him to you. Jesus knew what Judas is up to, but Jesus still expected him to change. During this last supper, this meal, Jesus told his disciple that one of you will betray me. There's one traitor among you sitting here at the table. There's a room for a discussion about Judas being here during this Last Supper or not. What we know for sure is that Judas was present when they started to have the supper in the upper room. And Jesus told his disciple that one of you will betray me. And Judas thought that Jesus didn't know. And maybe he heard some rumors that someone will betray him. And he said, is it me, Lord? And Jesus said, yes, you said so. Jesus knows our heart. And Jesus told his disciple again that tonight we, ye will desert me. Ye will scatter because they will strike the shepherd. Peter said, no, Jesus, I will stay with you until I die. Jesus did not argue with him. He said, Peter, the cock will not crow yet and you'll deny me three times. Jesus knows everything, my friend. Jesus left with his disciples, prayed with his disciples before he was headed to the cross. Just for a few hours, he asked his disciples to stay awake with him, but they fell asleep. How can you stay awake with the Lord? How can you be there for Jesus? Jesus needs you. Jesus wants to use you. Jesus wants you to fight against the desire of your flesh and to focus on him. Judas came with all of the crowd, the chief priests and the elders of the people, and gave Jesus this kiss, which most of us know by the kisses of Judas, the betrayal. And Jesus said, I've been in the court of the temple every day teaching. Why didn't you arrest me then? But I know that this is happening so that the prophecies will be fulfilled. Everything about Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecies, the word of God. I'm going to tell you a few things about the fulfillment of the prophecies here. Jesus being born in the manger. Part of this prophecy is the betrayal. I've heard people say that the betrayal is part of the plan. So if you have been betrayed by someone, that is part of the plan to bring you closer to God. The betrayal, the arrestation, the false testimonies, his death, the 30 pieces of silver to buy the field of blood, the striking him, the casting lots of his clothes, and they divided it and more and more to fulfill God's plan for our salvation. Jesus did not fight back. Jesus told his disciple that if I asked from my father, he could have sent 
12 legions of angels to fight back. But that's not the whole point here. God has a plan for me and to die on the cross is that plan. They put a big sign on his cross saying that Jesus from Nazareth. And you can see it when you see some of the crosses, you see the word I-N-R-Y, which is the abbreviation from the Latin word that means Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Judas, after betraying Jesus Christ, had the remorse. He went back to the chief priest and threw away the money. He had this sense of repentance to ask for forgiveness, but his action after that was wrong. Instead of going back to the 11 and ask for forgiveness, he committed suicide. Peter, after recognizing that he sinned against God, that he denied his Lord, he cried. He went back to the other disciples. He regretted. So his repentance is turning and going to Jesus. Judah's repentance is turning and then just follow the road to death. When you repent, what do you do? Do you turn back to Jesus or you just tell people that I did something wrong? I'm so sorry. When you say you did something wrong, you come back to the cross of Jesus and Jesus will forgive you. Jesus would say, Father, forgive him. Father, forgive her, for they do not understand what they do. We're going to walk through the Holy Week next week. We see here that Joseph from Armathia came to Pilate and asked for his body. In John 19, uh, it talks about Nicodemus also. The one who was mentioned in John chapter 3. Nicodemus came with Joseph from Armathia and asked for the body of Christ to be buried. So the disciple of Christ, some of the disciples came out of the darkness, came out of the hiding mode and shout up to the governor Pilate and say that from now on, I'm not just a fan or follower, but I am a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Are you a true disciple of Jesus Christ? What happened when you go through some persecution because of your faith in the Lord? Are you going to deny him? Probably you've hurt someone in the past. You might have hurt somebody and you might think that you betrayed someone. Come back to Jesus. Jesus will forgive you. Probably you have denied Christ in your life because of some benefits. Jesus said, come back and I'll forgive you. Jesus knows everyone and Jesus gives chance to each of us to repent and to become a child of God. Cry Hosanna. Cry save me, O God. Jesus Christ, you are my Messiah. You came to take away my sins. Save me, Jesus. You are my King, Jesus. You are the Son of God who came down and you love me. If you paid attention to the reading today, what a sad story. What a sad story. And Jesus did it for me. Jesus did it for you because of his love and to give new life to everyone who believes in him.